Hi, my name is Jeff, and I recently started getting into hardware descriptive languages. I wanted to convey what that experience was like for those of you who may be going through a similar phase right now where you're trying to introduce yourself to something written in Verilog, um, basic FPGA design. And I remembered a lot of the things because I started so recently that uh, I remembered a lot of the things that were difficult for me and a lot of the things that are a striking transition when you're going from software development to hardware development or hardware design rather. So while it's still fresh in my mind I'd like to try and help you uh, go through the same process and I'll be doing this by explaining a few things about what you're doing and also about um, an actual sample project. We'll do a couple simple things and I'll go through the basics on how to implement various concepts, how to work with the various pieces that you're given in these uh, harder descriptive languages. I'll be using Verilog. Um, so let's get started. First of all, you're going to need a few things if you want to uh, complete like the demonstration part of this. You can still listen to the explanations if you don't have the hardware, but that's probably not going to be uh, super informative. You really need to be hands-on and try this. So what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need a sufficiently fast computer, because if your computer is slow, you're really getting into the wrong hobby. Uh, these things take ages to create a programming file for your FPGA. Um, whenever you start to go compile, if that's even the right term, some code. You're also going to need ISE Webpack 12.1. For the purpose of this video, I'm assuming you've already installed it. If not, it's available at xilinx.com for free. Uh, it's xilinx.com. Go to download their development environment. I'll give a link to it. Uh, so make sure you have that installed. Pause the video and install it if you don't have it, unless you don't have the hardware. You're also going to need a third thing. You're going to need an actual FPGA development board. Now, the Xilinx Spartan 3E is a very common platform. It's inexpensive, it's powerful, so that's what I'm going to be using for the purpose of this video. If you don't have one, you can get one for about $150 a full development board. Let's take a look at that real quick. The board I've got here is a Digilent starter platform based on the Spartan 3E. This particular one is the 500,000 gate model. It's relatively inexpensive even if you're not in education, though they do offer education discounts which are pretty healthy. Um, if you don't have one, I'd recommend you get one or something similar. Um, this happens to be one of the best ones that I found whenever I was considering purchasing that, so I would recommend something like this, especially if you're going to be trying to follow this video. Um, you can go to uh, digilentinc.com, just do a search for D-I-G-I-L-E-N-T, you'll get there, and you can order directly from them. Don't worry about all this stuff on the side, uh, you won't be using that for the purpose of this video, it's just a project I'm working on. So what is HDL? The basic idea for what we're doing here is we are no longer writing code that gets translated into a bunch of commands for a microprocessor that get executed one after the other uh, whenever they're compiled. Instead, the code we write describes an actual piece of hardware. Um, in the case of an FPGA, what it's doing is it loads a configuration file whenever it initializes and it configures itself internally. Um, to be what it is you told it to be. Now, Verilog is a higher level language than just setting the bits yourself that would define the device. You can do that, but it will let you do familiar constructs like an if statement to compare two values and then execute uh, some other function you want to do based on if that's true or not by translating that into an equivalent uh, hardware comparison. For example, if you say you want to compare something to the value 1, one of the signal pins, let's call it signal A. If signal A equals 1, then whatever, that would be what you would do in software. 
on hardware you're going to write something very similar but what's actually happening is on the hardware level you're creating an AND gate one of the inputs is that signal pin the other input is a constant value of 1 um, so reference high voltage and if that's true then the output's 1 if it's not then the output is 0 um, so it's important to keep that in mind because you can't create an efficient piece of hardware without having some mindfulness of what's actually going on but on the opposite side of the same token you don't have to know every single thing that's going on on the hardware level it will abstract that for you and that's one of the major powerful things about a hardware descriptive language it allows you as the designer to free yourself from some of the mundane tasks of hardware design just don't lose complete sight of that